Welcome to Danny Soap DIY. We're going to be working on Christmas vintage projects, and we're going to start out with these beautiful winter birds. I'm going to repurpose mason jar lids, but bear in mind you can use the Dollar Tree wood cutouts or even some cardboard. Grab your Mod Podge, your X-Acto knife, and a quality glue stick. I am using one from Dollar Tree, and it worked really well. You'll cut out these free printables and you'll find that link in the description box down below and you'll be able to size these to the same size as any jar lid such as your regular pint size jars mason jar lid these are about three and a half inches and once you place your high quality scrapbooking paper or cardstock of a beautiful print i selected this pine cone with the faux snow onto the cedar vines or cedar limbs rather and I am using a glue stick to place the bird winter bird printout and then make sure that if you're using a mason jar lid to dent it in like I did so that it will not fold up on you when you get ready to do the rest of it and trim off any paper on the edges we don't want anything exposed or hanging over our lid or wood cut out or cardboard. I trim these out with G-twine and you'll understand why. One, it closes off that opening, which is a difference between the back and the front on a mason jar lid or cannon lid. And the second thing to do is by finishing that raw edge of that paper off, it's gonna ensure that it holds up for years and it's not gonna tear. And this is regular printer paper. I printed these on my inkjet printer. You could use laser or inkjet and print these beautiful free printables out. You'll find the link in the description box down below. Take some of the tinsel uh, stems or Chanel stems, and I selected the red and the green that coincide with the colors of these winter bird sceneries that we have for this Christmas craft. And when you twist them together, you'll have a little extra, and I simply glued it to, so it completes it all the way around, and they look fantastic. They truly look vintage, just like the traditional vintage nostalgia Christmas ornaments. So as you can see here, I'm taking the shiny tinsel of green and red, and I'm twisting them together. The silver and the green look really good on these, and the red and silver look good but it looked more vintage, more real, like the vintage ornaments by putting the red and green together. Now you can use some spray glue and I smeared mine around because I wanted to strategically place my faux snow just for that little glistening in the scenery. And I used my finger to just place it where I wanted it once I sprayed it. If you have something that's a finer mist, by all means do it and you can also use the spray glue from Dollar Tree. If you have a glue stick that works just as well, you could use Mod Podge, anything to get the glue onto the paper and let the glitter adhere to it. And as you can see, I'm dusting off the difference. And voila, they're just beautiful. So I'm gonna select some beautiful cording and I'm gonna show you off this crocodile. You'll find the affiliate link down below, but you can purchase this at Hobby Lobby. It has two different size punches, and it will punch all the way through this metal, paper, cardboard, and all like it's not even there with hardly any effort. And you're able to adjust the depth. So once I place my lid under the lip there, you'll see me scoot up the plastic piece to make sure it's adjusted, and then that way every time I put one in, it's going to hit the same spot. And I want it real close to the edge. That way when I put my cord or ribbon to hang the Christmas ornament by, these winter snowbirds will look beautiful on my Christmas tree. And these make a great gift for bird lovers. This is all the metal that came out. And here they are. They're just gorgeous. And you get a set of six in this free printable. Next up, let's make a vintage Merry Christmas sign with holly. And I did this in parts and pieces, so we're going to start out by painting us a 1 by 4 by 14 and 3 quarter or 15 inch sign. 
If your sign happens to be a little bit broader than this, this printout will work perfect. I will include it in a free printable as well if you wish to use this one. But basically what I did is I captured this picture from Google and I took and sized it up to what I needed. It still ended up being a little large. So as you see here, I'm going to fussy cut it and make it fit. And you can adjust yours the very same way. If you want to make the font smaller, then simply select a smaller size to print. I chose two of the holly leaves, so I'll have one on each corner. Now, I am rough cutting this, not exactly a true fussy cut, and you're going to see why. So stick around because this sign is going to truly look like a traditional vintage sign, and I'm going to show you how to do it. And it will never even be detected that there is any Mod Podge on this at all, and you'll see why. So follow closely. We're going to do the bleed through technique. You know, anytime you write with a magic marker on thin paper, it will bleed through to the other side. Well, guess what? That works better for me than a pencil because I needed it darkened, and I'm getting older. My eyes have the 50 fuzzies. <laughs> so for those of you who are in the same club with me, you're going to enjoy doing this with a magic marker. It goes swifter, and you'll be able to see it better. And now, as you can see, I did my Mary, and I already knew the Christmas was not going to fit. So we have to cut it down some more. And that's what you do. You are truly DIY. Make it work. Adjust it. Make your edits and fix it to where it looks right. And you can fudge on the rest because you'll be able to compensate for that difference when you go to actually drawing and filling it in after you traced it with your marker. So there we go, you can see that on camera. And these holly leaves, they're gonna fit in the corners. So I brought it up closer so you can kind of get an idea of where I'm going here. So grab your paint marker, and if you don't already own some, you'll find an affiliate link in the description box down below. But these Sharpies, this is the fine tip, and I get this at Walmart or Target. Now you see, I'm going over the letters with the paint marker. This is only the first step, so stick with me here and you'll understand because we do have a few more steps to go through in order to finish this vintage Merry Christmas sign. And I'm calling this one the Christmas signs. <laughs> so this is do-it-yourself Christmas signs. Vintage Christmas signs. Okay, so I have it all filled in now as far as tracing over the bleed through of the magic marker for the Merry Christmas. Now you see how I'm broadening my strokes there to match the official printout that I did. And I'm once again laying that piece of paper up there in front of me that's off camera to where I can go back and forth with my eyes and using my paint marker to fill in the letters. To shape them and keep them in shape, I'm just following the same lines I laid down with the bleed through of the magic marker. And now I'm just broadening those strokes and coloring them in. This is just like coloring on a coloring book page. So don't be intimidated because you can definitely do this. If I can do this, you can do this. Now, I have to adjust my little holly to make it look right and to look like the vintage sign and so that it matches because I had to finagle with the writing. Now this, I want you to pay attention. The smallest amount of Mod Podge, just enough underneath the paper to get it to adhere and then any difference I smear over top of it just to get it to hold into place because we're going to make some serious adjustments to this holly. So now it's on there, it's good and dry. Get your sanding sponge and you know to distress it by sanding it. And you're going to sand over the holly as well. And as you can see real quick, you can distress this and make it look worn as though it's been around for many, many years. And I know some of my DIYers listening probably on a similar sign like this that would have been made back in the day. And maybe they've stuck it in the attic. Just think of maybe getting it out and doing what we're fixing to do here to freshen it up 
and bring it back to life because this is truly a beautiful piece. So I've grabbed my paint marker and I'm tracing out the holly leaves. This is a green paint marker. This one came from Walmart. And they look gigantic, but they have a pretty much fine medium point. There again, if you do not own a paint marker of this sort, you can use the affiliate link down below or you can check out Target and Walmart. Now I've took the red and colored in the berries. Now I'm going back with the marker over the holly. And we're just making it pop. We're really giving it true character here and just bringing them to life. I mean, they're seriously going to look like true holly that was on the vintage signs. And I wanted that deeper green color that's on the vintage signs. And as you see here, I'm adding little accents. I'm putting in the per se shading, which with the vintage signs, everything was accentuated. It really uh, had a lot of defined lines versus shading. So see here, just work and follow the print. We're literally going over that paper so it's as though the paper doesn't exist anymore. We put a little bit of Mod Podge there to hold it in place and to also accentuate our print so we could follow it. And see, we're simply going over it with our marker. Go back in and put your little accent white on your berries and it's going to truly set it off now it really pops and i'll be honest with you i put this in my booth at the emporium and a part of me is hoping that it doesn't sell on this one sign it and date it you'll be so proud that you did and voila merry christmas next up we have two more vintage signs you're going to love these vintage Christmas signs, and they are replicating the snowman and another Merry Christmas. Now, I've selected the Waverly Fern Green over top of the white boards I'd already selected in various sizes, and I'm using this Persian Gray. Now, this Merry Christmas sign, you will find the free printables in the link in the description box down below for both of these, and trim it to fit because I printed mine a bigger size. Now, you can always select to print yours a smaller size. Once again, we're going to use Mod Podge on this particular print. Now, watch what I do. I put it on the paper, and I mean just the barest amount, just enough to cover that paper. And then I will place a small amount in the center of the board. Now, the reason why I always follow up with Mod Podge after I get it good and set is I want to permanate it there. And Mod Podge is a sealer. A lot of people forget Mod Podge is a sealer. I do not have problems with bubbles or wrinkles or rolling because I never, ever, ever, never shake my Mod Podge. The bottle will tell you and instruct you to roll it on the table if you feel you need to mix it, but it never needs to be mixed. It never needs to be shaken. You simply take it straight out of the jar and use it. And you should not have no wrinkle problems unless you're overusing it. And make sure that you massage it in by stroking back and forth when you can. Apply the slightest amount that you need, the minimal, and it is going to adhere. And as you see, I took my brush right there and I lay it down. Then I put a coat, a very thin coat over it that seals it to the wood and it is forever there. Now I have my wood sealed and my signage sealed. So this vintage Christmas sign represents the frosty snowman that was used back in the 50s and even earlier. I am taking the red tinsel and I'm going to place it on the top and on the bottom. This particular print, you will find that it has an edge on it because I had to duplicate it. I didn't buy an original, and I cropped it out so that we could use it for our vintage Christmas crafts. Now, I took the peppermint ribbon. I got this from Dollar Tree. It is satin. It is beautiful. It is so shiny and silky. And I 
took and wrapped it around the top edge and then created me a shoestring bow or a pledge bow. And that's where you just cross them over, cut the tails, and I took the red tinsel and tied it in the center. And once I have this tied in the center or twisted in the center, I cut off any difference and I glue it into place. If you want to trim your tails down, you can. If you want to leave them long, you can. But this was just enough to show off this piece. And he looks so handsome. I love Frosty the Snowman. And this vintage snowman represents the snowman that I grew up with. Now, to spruce up this Merry Christmas and make it truly look like a vintage Christmas sign, take some of the peppermint striped fabric from Dollar Tree, put you a snip in it, and cut it down to this one is around a half inch wide. And make sure you leave a little bit of your green revealing on your sign so it looks like the bands that they originally put on these signs. And therefore, you will have a true vintage Merry Christmas sign replica. These are just great Christmas projects. And everyone is loving the vintage, and so am I. I still collect vintage ornaments, and I still look for them. And, of course, I replicate them. So this is really in my home space. Grab a little sprig of greenery. This really just looks good on this sign. Back in the day, it would have been fake greenery, but not as voluptuous and as real looking as our greenery we have now. And a few little berries. And once you have topped that off with even a pine cone or two, voila, you have your Merry Christmas Vintage Christmas sign. They're just absolutely gorgeous pair. Once again, that free printable will be in the description box down below. Welcome to the Dean Soap DIY channel. I'm Elizabeth. Well, we're working on vintage, nostalgia, retro, and all these wonderful things. And I've thrifted a whole lot of items. So you can go, oh, I have one of those, and ooh, I can do that. And kind of give them a little facelift, a little update, a little sprucing up. And you are going to be so entertained with this and inspired to be even more creative than you already are. I already know you're the best DIY team on YouTube, in my opinion. And yes, I'm partial. I love you guys. Thank you for all you do. I hope you are having a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving. And I know we're going to have a very, very Merry Christmas. So stay tuned. Let's get back to the video and be inspired to be even more creative. See you in there. Well, I must say, I am Norman Rockwell at heart. I love Saturday Post. And these vintage printables will be found in the link down below in the description box. The one of the gentleman and the little boy riding on the hobby horse is a Christmas issue. It is one of my very favorites. So, the Saturday Post, that was, I just had to have this one. And I know that there are many of you out there who must love the Saturday Post. There, there's just nothing like the Saturday Evening Post uh, to me. They are so unique. And then this Merry Christmas with the holly is on a tambourine, which is quite unusual and charming. So Fussy cut it out, and we want to get it really close because I'm going to show you a new technique in this particular vintage Christmas sign. So Stick around because you don't want to miss it. Now, I am fussy cutting it. As you can see, I'm not worried about any of that little bit of white showing. It's okay. Grab you a few of the canvas boards from Dollar Tree. And this is the maize yellow. So, as you can see, I'm using a chip brush. And I'm not trying to give a heavy coat of paint. I want coverage. I want that glistening. So, I'm going to take the green metallic. And this is the, I think this is the Merlot. And see how I'm using that chip brush, the dirty chip brush, dipping it into it and brushing outward from the center going outward. I'm not worried about the center because it's going to be covered. So I'm checking to see how much I've got on there. All right, we need just a smidge of our Mod Podge. 
and I put it on the paper first. Remember what I told you, the very minimal amount. And this technique is more of a, it's a brightening, and it's more of an accentuate from the back, as though the back is backlit. And you can get that, you can achieve that technique by doing what we did. You're using a bright color, but you're also topping it with a metallic. And these are folk art paints, and the metallics, I am telling you, the sky is the limit. Every color you can think of, they are magnificently beautiful. So now, once you've got it Mod Podge on there, like I said, just enough to get the print on there, underneath, you're going to take the chip brush with the Idoc Green or Murdoch Green, I think it's Murloc, and scatter about it. See how we've just smeared over the top of it? It is beautiful. When it dries, go ahead and put your Mod Podge on it. If it's still a little damp, that's okay too, because you'll be able to pull that metallic around and it just makes it look even better. Now, isn't that truly looking vintage? I mean, to me, that's just so vintage and true replica. So grab you one of the picture frames from Dollar Tree and you're gonna love this. I know it's very, very reflective on screen, but in person, it looks so fantastic and it looks professionally framed. So once I put the canvas into the frame, now remember it's dried, it's ready to go. I want to take the tinsel and trace around this frame. This is a silver frame, and back then they would have been a metal frame, and they would have been surrounded in tinsel. They would have actually, the, the frame would have been covered with the tinsel stems as this, and you wouldn't have even been able to see the frame, but I thought we would duplicate it and replicate it by using one of the frames that is already shiny metal. You could use any one you want. If you use enough of that tinsel, you're not going to see it anyway. Voila, there she is. This is our vintage Christmas or Merry Christmas sign with tampering. So let's finish up our Saturday evening post with our gentleman and a little boy riding on a hobby horse. Once again, you'll find these free printables in the link description box down below. Use the ink from Waverly to cover your canvas or black, and I'm using that Parisian gray of Waverly paints. And I put a coat over it just in the areas where I know the picture's gonna extend to. Just enough Mod Podge, just a bare amount that you need to get it onto your canvas. Touch it down. Pat it, pat it, pat it, and anything left over. Now, once that dries, top it with a very small amount of Mod Podge to lock in the corners so it never comes off. Now, I need the frame, and unfortunately, I didn't want to put this in a glass frame. I wanted it to be a set-in frame to set it back like a shadow box. So, I took one of the canvases apart, cut it, and made me a frame. I put my board back on the back so that it has a craft board. Now I'm going to show you a trick on how to make you a wire hanger. Take you two thumbtacks, put one on either side, do not push it all the way in just yet. Grab you some of the floral wire and twist it around it. You can even use the wire from your ribbon spools that you pulled out of the ribbon. Wrap it around there and make sure it's straight and taut because there will be play in this type of wire. A dab of glue, a dab of glue, and voila, you have a hanging Saturday Evening Post collectible vintage sign. So get to craft and work on your vintage signs. Until the next DIY, this is Elizabeth. I'll be crafting y'all. Merry Christmas.